Hello everyone, my name is Nikita Raj and I'm a junior in high school. I've always loved teaching kids and about four years ago, I was presented with the opportunity to learn something that I passionately believe should be taught to kids at an early age. Over the past few years, I've worked with professors researching energy usage in households and how education to children at an early age can make a big difference. We're growing up in a rapidly changing world with terabytes and petabytes of data and we should be better equipped to understand it. This needs to be done starting at an early age. Kids are not given sufficient education about how to understand data related to energy usage and how to change their household activities after interpreting their data, otherwise known as energy data thinking. This disconnect between our advancing data atmosphere and the lagging education regarding it needs to be addressed. I had the opportunity to survey kids in my community about their knowledge of, en of energy data science and their thoughts on how it would be used in the future. A majority of the students surveyed said they have not used data science nor were they interested in energy data thinking. This is a huge problem. I want everyone to stop and think about the last time you saw your energy bill. I know, I know, not the most fun thing to remember, but try to think back to it. You either tore open your envelope or clicked on the email from your utility company. After looking at the little charts and the balance that was due, what did you do? Here's what my parents used to do. They would glance at the number, tell my sister and me to turn off the lights when we left our rooms, and we would all move on until we received another bill the following month. This became a cycle and there wasn't much change in how we used our energy. Then in the eighth grade, I started assisting a professor with research on a really interesting project that dealt with energy usage in households and data analysis. We started teaching students about the significance of their energy usage, how to interpret their household data and how to create an action plan. This is when I came across the world of energy data thinking. The amount of new information absorbed was not only eye-opening, but a little bit disappointing because I hadn't learned this crucial information earlier and it had the potential to work towards a more sustainable world. So let me take a step back and share some of this information with you. Most of us have seen data tables and basic graphs, but how much are you really able to absorb what's being presented? How do you think the manipulation of data sets affects your ability to internalize information and make corresponding changes to your lifestyle? Let's look at these graphs together. What information can you observe from the first graph? Maybe after reading the X and Y axis, looking at the title, and just looking at the graph as a whole, you can get an idea of what's going on. You see that the information being presented to you is about energy usage, but there's not too much more that's easily understandable. Now let's look at this next graph. This one is a little bit more visually interactive. You can clearly see that the most energy was used on March 12th. So you probably have a few questions. Why did my family use the most energy on the 12th and what happened that day? Maybe we can look at the same data in a different way. We can see that the 12th is a Friday. So maybe we can gain some insight here. What do you typically do on Fridays that's different? Do you wake up earlier or do you stay up later watching your favorite TV show? So let's look at the 12th with this in mind. We can see that on the 12th, the energy had three peaks. The first at 9 a.m., the second around 12 p.m., and the third around 9 p.m. This information is super important. One of the things that I learned about was the time of use window. This is a predefined time interval during the day, typically around 4 to 9 p.m., when more families are using energy at the same time. During these hours, clean energy sources are not able to dispense enough energy to provide for all the houses that are cooking dinner, turning on their lights, running their sprinklers, or using large appliances like the TV, washer, and dryer. To meet that energy demand, your utility company pulls from dirtier sources. Now, you may be wondering, what is clean and, energy, clean and dirty energy? Energy can come from different sources, but when talking about how it's made, we categorize it into two main types clean energy and dirty energy. Clean energy sources are most commonly biomass, geothermal, hydropower, solar, and wind. Dirty energy sources are most commonly coal plants. According to the Climate Reality Project, coal accounted for 45% of global energy-related carbon dioxide emissions in 2011. This is the world's leading source of energy-related carbon pollution. When pulling energy from dirty sources, not only is it bad for the environment, but it also costs the utility company more 
which in turn increases your, which in turn costs you more. To avoid adding carbon dioxide to the environment and to lower your energy bills, it's important to create an action plan to change your energy habits. Changing your energy habits cannot be like making those New Year's resolutions that you forget after January. They need to last. The first step should be for you and your family to sit down and set a goal. Start with looking at what energy consuming activities you typically do in your household and what times you do them. Let me show you my family's activities from last March. This graph shows the activities we did from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. We noticed that in the time of use window between four and nine, we were doing the majority of our energy consuming activities, such as preparing meals and watching TV. After looking at this data, I talked about the insights I gathered from our energy usage with my parents, and I shared the information that I had collected with, through graphs. We decided that we wanted to save money on our electricity bill and decrease the use of dirty energy sources, so we, all, we were all going to work towards reducing our energy consumption. We made a plan and started working on some energy saving habits. We learned we could do a number of things to save on our energy bill. For example, by all of us eating together in one place at one time, going on walks during the time of use window, avoiding using large appliances like the washer, dryer, and TV during these hours, we could save a lot of money on our electricity bill and decrease our total energy usage. Now in 2020, things have changed. With the global pandemic, we now have more family members at home and we're spending more time on our devices. So it's all the more important to keep working towards decreasing energy usage and to keep energy consuming activities out of the time of use window. Let me show you my family's activities from this year. As you can see, we've made a habit to decrease energy consuming activities during the time of use window. I felt accomplished knowing we were able to use energy data thinking to change the way that my family used energy and that we were taking steps towards creating a more sustainable world. After this, I came to realize that kids can play a very important role in decreasing energy usage in a household, including changing energy consuming activities. Most kids are not given the exposure to data related to energy usage or taught about creating lasting action plans. But closing the gaps in education related to energy data thinking could be key to a future of a greener earth. Teachers, policymakers, and other educators must ensure that energy data thinking is taught from a very early age. It's important to realize the potential of energy education because students require an understanding of what energy data is, how to analyze visualizations, and how to take action based on their observations. Thank you.